Welcome to Articulate Space Tour, bringing you tomorrow's future today. How can we help you? Okay. And is this your first time leaving our solar system? Okay. Well, if you're looking to visit one of our many exoplanets, you have come to the right place, for we have some of the most luxurious, most executive, and more importantly than that, the most memorable setups and terraform planets anywhere in the known galaxies. Before we go any further, if you are looking to leave our solar system, we just need to have a quick health check and a quick status report to make sure that you're eligible, you look fantastic, and I'm sure you're in perfect health. If you bear with me just one second, I'll bring up your health diagnostics. Computer, roll down diagnostic screen one, please. Just a moment. Enlarge. Okay. Move to screen one. Okay. All your vitals suggest you are in perfect health. But I knew that just by looking at you. Okay. With the preliminaries out of the way, what did you have in mind? We know you want to leave our solar system get beyond the Milky Way, but to where? Did you have a specific galaxy in mind, perhaps Andromeda? Okay. How about I offer you, or at least uh, we can peruse some of our most popular destinations and maybe one or two that aren't as popular but for those that choose to go have the most incredible and as i mentioned memorable time there all right okay well we'll go through a list of uh, of recommendations if you make your selection we can actually take care of your inoculations and your healthcare here today. We can proceed with payment and we can schedule your flight as early as next week. We move that fast. Absolutely. Okay. Let me see what we have to offer you. So I think it's always right to offer Earth 2.0 as our initial consideration. The reason being is because sometimes, and I think more often than not, our customers don't necessarily need to see anything too different. Sometimes they just want the experience of space travel, which is exactly why we offer Earth 2.0. Now, this planet was originally known as Kepler 452b. And upon its initial discovery, well over a thousand years ago, it was put forward that it could one day serve as a habitable planet for humankind. And so it was, 
several hundreds of years later, it was the first terraformed planet. And because it was colonized so early, life on Earth 2.0 isn't a million miles away from how we know life today. It's just in a different galaxy. I'll give you a quick look. On screen. Now, as you can see, it looks really quite similar to Earth. It's well populated. It has a booming economy. And has greenery a way of living that you will have never experienced before. And sometimes that is all our clientele is looking for. The space travel and seeing familiarity, but different. And Earth 2.0 provides exactly that because this planet has been entirely terraformed. Your temperature ranges are very similar to Earth 1.0. You see very little winds, no storms, fairly predictable vacation, no unwanted surprises. Okay? But it's something to think about. You don't look like somebody who, who wants normal. You, you see normal every day. Okay? How about something in the polar opposite? Maybe polar is a wrong word. How about second sun? Now, this burning ball of heat originally called X-22C. It was discovered uh, 300 years ago. And the reason we as a company decided to offer trips and excursions to Second Sun was because we were told we couldn't. The temperature on Second Sun uh, ranges between 31 to 38,000 C, 68,000 Fahrenheit. Now, we can't even imagine how hot that actually is. 68,000 Fahrenheit, 38,000 centigrade. Now, the way we're able to overcome the obviously perilous nature of this planet thanks to some very advanced thermodynamics and a very elegant array of heat shielding you will be essentially entering into what looks like a glass hotel now this glass hotel offers you the most stunning, and I mean the most stunning of views. Because although Second Sun is incredibly warm to the point it's uh, inhospitable, we've created a space station that levitates about a thousand feet off the surface. And in this glass domed palace, you get to experience real science fiction. Standing on what is essentially one of the closest planets to its star. And it's only two and a half million miles away from its star. And you get to experience. But once you've seen molten lava, an ocean full of it, 
Maybe that isn't what you want. Maybe that isn't what you're looking for. How about something like Jilix 17? Jilix 17 looks a little bit intimidating. It's called one of the four horsemen. This dusky, silvery giant that's locked in almost perpetual darkness might not sound like the most appealing escape. But the reason, two reasons, people choose Jilix 17. The first Jellic 17 is the planet that was the very reason the diamond industry imploded in on itself. One third of the entire planet is made from diamond. Due to the infancy of the planet, or during its infancy, great amounts of pressure, carbon, forced onto this planet due to a very, very high amount of gravity. They melded this diamond. And of course people travel and diamond essentially is as common as uh, any, other, any other mineral now. But it still looks very pretty. And you can go down there and even mine your own little bit of diamond, have it shaped and take it away with you. It was originally colonized purely for mining, and of course, as the diamond price fell, the uh, original colony found other ways. They diversified, and of course, we saw opportunity as uh, articulate space tours usually does. And we built a resort there that's uh, luxurious fitting with the environment. And the second reason you might want to visit Chilix. Although it is locked in near perpetual darkness, for 46 minutes every day you will get to see this. Now this might be similar to something that we used to have on planet Earth many hundreds of years ago called the Northern Lights or Aurelia Borealis. On Jilix, it's essentially gases burning from the atmosphere captured by the perfect precision of just a little bit of light generates the most beautiful spectacle really is quite breathtaking but it is only for a short period of time and then the planet once again resorts back into a state of total darkness okay i think the final offering this might suit you well is the Treor Nebula. Now, the Treor Nebula doesn't actually have uh, any planets or satellites that we would land on. Think of it more as a guided tour through perhaps one of the most beautiful nebulas we've ever discovered. From the outside looking in, screen for you. That deep crimson almost inviting you in. However, once inside the nebula, you'll find this red almost mold into the most beautiful blue. And the 
this blue hue just, just entices you in. I actually was lucky enough to visit the Treyor Nebula two years ago and it was memorable to say the least. Absolutely. Now I know it's difficult to ah Delisa 581G that's not a planet I'm familiar with ah okay um, the Gleason galaxy hasn't been visited in uh, over a thousand years there was a, an ongoing conflict and one of the departure vessels, commercial vessels, was caught in crossfire between two militias. Uh, quickly, very soon after the incident, many of the companies withdrew from the star and the galaxy and once the Corporations left, the citizens left uh, shortly after. Gleesa is now what's known as a dead star. Uh, we call them dead stars when uh, humankind has visited, terraformed, created atmosphere, started civilization, and then left for uh, one reason or another. This is surprisingly common. There's scientists who reason that uh, humanity is, uh, finds it difficult to tear itself away from Earth for extended periods of time. And if things aren't going well, we are more likely to leave uh, colonized star to leave Earth. Uh, I don't know the full details of, of the Gleesa incident, but I do remember being taught it uh, in school a long time ago. Sorry, so nobody can take you to Gleesa. But, okay. Well, Earth 2.0, or Kepler 42b, is a great choice. Actually, give you a little diagram. In proportion to our Milky Way, Kepler doesn't look a, a whole lot different. We are a little bit further from our Sun on Earth. Earth 2.0 is a little bit closer to its star, and average temperature on, on the surface is a little bit warmer. But not so that you would need to be um, covering up or suited. You'll be breathing oxygen and it will feel like being at home. I'll give you a, a couple of shots of some of our facilities there. Computer, can you load up uh, database 4 for Earth 2? It looks amazing, right? Interestingly enough, the concept for terraforming Earth 2.0, there's an interesting story actually behind it. A little bit sad, but interesting. The concept came from uh, the 1970s. Some very early science fiction writers were envisioning what life on other planets could look like. And the concept grew from there. But, and this is uh, it's interesting bit of trivia about the planet. The very first trip to colonize Kepler was estimated to take 12 years on a spaceship that was increasing by 1G uh, 
every day. And the 12 years at this increasing velocity actually meant 1,400 years on Earth due to time dilation. Now, this is a concept where if you're moving at a certain speed, life carries on at a slower speed. So these 12 years equated to 1400 Earth years. Unfortunately for the astronauts on board Pioneer 7. At some point during their 12 year trip, I think we think after about three or four hundred years on Earth, they discovered warp speed and were able to warp to Earth 2.0. And by the time Pioneer 7 arrived, they didn't find a barren planet waiting for atmosphere and to be terraformed. They found a near 1,000 year old civilization and they couldn't believe it they thought it was alien life initially but humanity on earth developed warp in the 400 of the 1400 years warped to the planet and were living there for a thousand years before the 12 year initial space probe arrived Remarkable story, um, a little bit sad, but interesting. Time dilation, oh, as obviously now known, is, is very real. But with warp speed, we don't need to worry about it so much. You like the look of Earth 2.0. Okay, well, I can tell you I'm very happy to hear that. Before we go and make the booking, I must just check your inoculation. If you're up to date with your inoculations, what I'd like you to do is just to look straight ahead for me, please. I have a little hand scanner here, and all I need you to do is look towards the front facing pillar. You'll see a little light illuminating. And just look at the light. Just look at the light. Good. Very good. Okay. And the other eye. Some of your details on my screen. Okay, you are up to date on six of the nine required inoculations for Earth 2.0. Now this can be administered as an injection, as a pellet to swallow, or a liquid onto the tongue. Okay. I'll have that arranged. Computer. Three CCs. Good. It's being prepared. It'll be ready momentarily. Now, I can't promise it will help them most appealing taste, but it will keep you safe, keep you healthy. Good. Okay. Now, if you 
just open your mouth and just pop your tongue out, please. It'll be dropped onto the tongue. Good. Now, we uh, essentially send it with a little bit of rose water. It's not too unpleasant. Nothing we serve at the articulate space doors is unpleasant. Let me just calculate the total. Okay. Now, would you like to travel in first, second, or third class? We have reservations in all three decks. First class. Okay. Well, first class is 26,000 credit. Second is 11,000. And third class is 2,600. First class it is. Okay. Now this price does include your return fare, of course. You will be allocated a suite on the shuttle and you will have unlimited access to the hospitalities available on board, which are numerous. You'll be flying on the 726 Streamliner, our most newest and remarkable vessel. You'll be cruising for one day, approaching the warp gate. Now you warp to within two hours of Earth 2. Okay. Now I would recommend that you make the most of your time on our vessel. They are comfortable, artistic, and when being designed, they had nothing but relaxation and reassurance in mind. We have a spotless record with zero accidents of any kind. Passenger safety is our number one priority. And in first class, of course, you will be entitled to essentially anything you can order, anything you can think of, our chefs on board are eager to please. We have some of the most exotic and uh, weird and wonderful foods, honestly, until you've tasted a jellyfish from planet Rikotoka. I'm not sure you've lived. It's, uh, it's beautiful. It's a flavor that is quite literally out of this world. Pardoning the pun. Okay. <laughs> now, once you arrive, you'll be staying in Delins. Delins? is our six-star hotel on Earth 2.0 and Delins is a picture of modern architecture it stands alone and it's uh, again, it's comfort and it's hospitality and while you are there, it is a 14-day package, and again, entirely all-inclusive. If you wish, you could downgrade from the all-inclusive to half-board, which means your breakfast and your main meal in the evening is covered in your price. It's just lunch that you would need to either skip or uh, pay for individually. All inclusive. Wonderful. And if 
if you like, I could take you through some of our excursions for Earth 2.0. Okay, sure. Now, of course, originating is Kepler 5452b. A lonely planet was terraformed and given an atmosphere. Part of the planet has retained its original original charms. I'll give you a, a quick look, a closer look perhaps on the diagram we showed before. Computer and zoom in to original formation of Kepler. Good. Now at 16% of the planet was kept for uh, Posterity and for tourism. So you can see what the planet used to look like. And it's a very, very interesting. Um, there was a plant life of a sort that's native to the planet. Um, there was even a little bit of wildlife, um, which means, of course, we offer really uh, the most wild and, and interesting safari tour for what is technically the first alien life we as human beings ever came into contact with. You like the safari tour? Okay. It's funny when you say safari tour because it doesn't sound particularly exotic. It's, uh, you don't leave your galaxy to go on a safari tour, but we might have left the galaxy, but we didn't leave our language behind. And Seeing some animals in the natural habitat is a safari tour, regardless of uh, which planet you're on. I, you, you will see some of the most interesting animals, some of them unimaginable, and some very, very beautiful, by the way. We think of aliens and we have this negative connotation, um, but some of the animals, uh, the wildlife, are beautiful. I've only been there once, but I did do the safari tour. Okay. The Delin is honestly, it's, it's perfect. But when, when they finished it, when construction was complete, we knew we'd, we'd, we'd done something special. I'd also encourage you to try the local liquid testing. Now I say liquid because it's neither water nor is it a spirit, but the liquid, um, it closely resembles, uh, at least from a compound perspective, something similar to water, but it has rather interesting uh, side effect or impact the human mind we have this euphoric feeling for about 30 to 40 minutes and of course it's known as a heaven's blend and can I be purchased uh, recreationally but the heaven's blend created on Kepler from the natural rock and the natural foliage it's um, it's tasty takes you to this dizzying heights, very interesting experience, and entirely non-addictive. It's not something that um, the mind craves. It's just an interesting experience. Sometimes people do it once and that's all they need to take from it because they've done it. You're going to have the best time. I don't think we should book anything further. I think the, um, the heaven tasting and the safari suffice for just now. Of course, when you're on planet, you can make additional uh, reservations and excursions. You can also take an excursion to the moon of Kepler. It's Kepler. Uh, 
it has an observation point that is a breathtaking view but for me it still feels somewhat undeveloped um, they obviously had a lot of work to do on Kepler uh, but Kepler uh, does have an observation point that is worth a trip and again it's another excuse to, to ride in a spaceship I suppose but um, if you're pushed for time maybe give the, the satellite a, a miss I should really say that because it's one of our tours uh, one of our excursions but I am nothing if I'm not honest yes no we, we can we can take payment here let me just load up the scanner again just look into the light look into the light I need a Yes, I confirm payment to articulate space doors. Excellent. Payment confirmed. Fantastic. I have one final check that we, we need to do before uh, we can sign off on the travel have here a very miniature what's called hollow disk and an image will appear on the hollow disk and all I need you to tell me is what that image is Very good. And the final one. Well done. We can go ahead and confirm. And your ship departs in six days. 19 hours you will have all the information sent to your tracking ship it'll appear in about now you have mail <laughs> good okay we are about done I do hope you have an amazing time on Earth too. I, I, I am envious, but I love helping people select the most perfect exoplanet experience. I think you've chosen well. I think you're going to love everything about it. It's it's magical. Even the takeoff. Hear the engines roaring. And you're sitting comfortably in this beautiful suite. You have your own jacuzzi, uh, your own butler. And of course, when you arrive, you have an even larger suite. Tell him it's just it's a beautiful hotel. My absolute pleasure. Of course. Please, when you get back. Come and tell us how you found it. Tell us what we did exceptionally well and what we did even better. <laughs> My pleasure again. Anything at all, please. <laughs>